Thank you. Yeah. All right, bring this meeting back to order. Um, business. Land use ordinance reformat warrant. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, planning board has uh, worked with the uh, planner and has uh, done a complete uh, rewriting of the uh, land use ordinance to try to make it more user friendly. Uh, they've now held their public hearing. Uh, reference to expressing how this format is going. Uh, they are now seeking uh, a special town meeting from the board to uh, to have a town vote on whether or not we're going to change the format. So um, our my my recommendation at this point would be to um, to hold that uh, special town meeting in conjunction with the next business meeting, so folks can come. And, Whatever other additional details out of Friday the vote. We need a motion to that. I'll make that a motion. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? I do have to make a comment on that. I was at the public hearing and Donna did voice uh, the fact that. Yes, they are making it easier to use, but with one small change, they could make it even easier to use, and they decided not to do that. They will work on that later, so it just frustrates me that that they work so hard to do this much, when with a little bit more, they could get, they could get it down so that we didn't have to keep going back to the table and changing things and changing things. There's a, uh, if you vote in approval of uh, moving the special town meeting warrant forward, there is a uh, form that needs to be filled out that the clerk has provided for it. So, did you want to do it at the next meeting or the first meeting in April would be, I guess, your decision? Whatever you want to decide. I think the motion was the next board meeting. Yeah. Okay, so, 20, um, 20, 28, I believe. Yeah, 14 and 14 is 28. Yep, 28. Moving on B, request for a modification of voter hours. This is for the um, special state election for the uh, Senate district seat uh, that was vacated by uh, Senator Dutrumbo. Uh, we have to hold a special election on March 29th for that, and that is just to waive my the evening hours for the registrar <coughs> again. Otherwise, I have to stay open two hours for the evening for the registration. I think we do this for you every time, so I'll make a motion, then we approve the request. Second. You may second it all the favor. For appointment of warden by town clerk. Mrs. Castro. Mrs. Castro. Yes. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Now, appointment of deputy CEO. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, appoint uh, Mr. Jonathan Lee as uh, the Arundel deputy code enforcement officer for the town. Um, he will be uh, used exclusively for the uh, Mildred Day L Day school construction. So, um, Mr. Reed has got 10 years of experience with the city of Portland, and he also has 10 years of experience with um, the uh, town of Scarborough, and was uh, involved in many multi million dollar projects. Brings a vast amount of experience. Um, what we'd like to do is uh, put him on the, the payroll. He, um, just to add a little more information to this, he's also being hired by Kennebunk Port and Kennebunk to provide their expertise in, uh, in building inspection and code review of those projects as they kick off as well. So we felt uh, uh, Jim came to me and personally has felt that this was a, a good uh, addition, uh, that somebody would be uh, at the uh, contractor's uh, Availability when, when in fact they need inspections. 
the, the cost of this will be assumed by the RSU. So all the billing will be done directly to the RSU for, for his time and effort. There will be no cost to the town to have them. So the RSU has is this was this their recommendation, or did somebody go to the RSU and say, "Hey, we want this, and you folks pay for it"? This is uh, this is this came from Jim and I's discussion, and we approached, uh, and that's how it started on our end. What's the spelling of the last name, Reed? R E E D. I make motion to read that. Reed. She has to be here. No, he's not the clerk of the woods. No, he's going to be the inspector. Um, I believe the RSU has hired a uh, consultant to strictly look at all the project. He's at the business meeting today. I don't recall his name initially. sent out uh, notices earlier last week, so and I'll have, have new sheets too. I, I will have all the new sheets too. I'll have copies for you all. You don't have to bring them with you. So I think you sent them out Friday? You yes. sent them out Friday? I printed them off and put them in my book so I got Speaking up, it's, it's about the only thing we've got left. And this woman is suggesting, you know, maybe, I don't know, we can get ourselves invited to some of these powwows that um, um, Menard and Katie might be having. But of course, even though they're having it, they still got to report back to their board and their, and their trustees. They don't have any authority to cut a deal. But, uh, yeah, but you know, I mean, whether you know, get invited or not. Attending, I mean, look at the folks that were there that attended and spoke for what they wanted and, and I mean again even our own members on the court for it against it but that's their choice but no, you know, that's, yeah I mean they're subject to the yeah the voters I mean if they don't like the way they're being represented yeah. I wonder if yeah. Keith could get in touch with 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 Katie and and ask if at the request of the board uh, if they have meetings yeah. with uh, Thornton Academy that he be allowed to attend if possible. Certainly reach out and ask the, ask the question. Mm -hmm. 
that I mean, because I guess my, my biggest thing would be for, for people to email and get in touch with their directors. Just like if there's an issue in town and people call the town hall and they have a problem, we give them your emails and your phone numbers. And I think they need to do the same thing. Their RSU board is there to represent them, but they need to know what the people want. And I think the biggest thing is, like you say, contact your RSU directors and talk to them and email them and let them know what you're feeling. And, and if you don't like the way your representative represented the next election is when people can run and vote a new member in. And that's exactly what happens with any board as far as you know the election yeah. process. When we were at that meeting, they said that our representatives have had the responsibility to represent the RSU. And um, what was best for the RSU. And I think as parents, we did say quite frankly what we believed in the problems that we were having with some of the decisions that were made, but it kept getting repeated that it's not what's best necessarily for our children. I mean, that's not exactly how it was put, but they did say they had to vote for what was best for the RSU. But again, <coughs> again that, that's like, you know, the board, this board has no control over the RSU's decision process. Just like the RSU board has no control, they cannot come and tell the selectmen how to vote on something. But you as a, as the public can touch bases with all of the RSU directors. It doesn't have to be just a rundle because you might sway Kenny Bunk or Kenny Bunk Ford's representatives as well. So that's the democratic process, unfortunately. And yes, I, I can understand where they have to they do have to kind of like, you know, do the best decision for everybody, but, you know, if they, the more they hear from their constituents, the more it will influence them. So, you know, we've gotten a lot of letters, I'm sure you guys all have in the last, and I don't know how many of those letters have gone to the RSU board members, but, you know, they should be sending those to the RSU board members also, not just to us. Okay. I mean, I know that we attend the meetings, I attend the meetings, and, you know, sometimes I say my piece, uh, you know, I didn't say anything at the last meeting only because my comments were going to be the same thing that was said by hundreds of other people, you know. Um, but, you know, we only have, to me, we only have so much of a say here, and I, I don't think, to me, three is enough. But, you know. I think that there are letters going to the governor, to the Department of Education, to the RSU, to Thornton, to you guys. I don't, I think that that is a definite. But what I was talking about was more of like a mediated conversation between this board, between TANS, or between TA, and between RSU, so that we could come to some kind of, like, they know that we're vested in the kids and what we want. They know what they want. You know, everybody kind of hears this, rather than TA getting it from parents who are very concerned and anxious. RSU getting it from parents who are very concerned and anxious and not getting the town part of that in it. And I think that if you did approach either one of them, that they would be very amicable to doing something like that. Because I know that I, if I email Mr. Bernard, I pretty much get an answer that day. And I don't think I'm the only parent saying that I get an answer that day. And the same thing with Ms. Haas or Mrs. Haas, I don't know what she is, but I emailed her because I was upset because the high school representatives actually made an amendment at that meeting, and it was voted on <laughs> and accepted. And that kind of really bothered me. <laughs> and so I emailed her, and she was very good about getting back to me, and it ended up still not being what I thought because she said that since it wasn't um, addressed at the board meeting that it would go ahead and be accepted as it was, but um, she did get right back to me. So I do think that it just would be good to get everybody together. Yeah, and I think it's a good idea, but I mean, where does it stop, right? I mean, we have we have our say, but now the Kennebunk selectmen may you know, I don't know what they feel, and we don't know what the Kennebunk Port selectmen feel, so this could turn into a meeting with all three selectmen and all, and... But it more affects a rundle of kids. But it, but so we, we don't I understand, care. but they don't care about that, right? I mean, that, 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 that was pretty clear with board members. It was pretty clear that they really, it was fiscally responsible. That was, that was pretty clear. Yeah. 
So, you know. As far as like the hours you go to not having a voice and not having them listen, I, I'm sorry, we might only have three people from Arundel, but I wrote to all of the RSU uh, board members, and it was actually the uh, ones from, uh, there was so many from Kenny Monk Port and Kenny Monk that got back to me and had an actual conversation with me regarding what I was concerned about and what I wanted to see happen. So um, if maybe we have three Arundel representatives, but that's our board. That's the RSU board, and they represent all of us. And you know, it's shame on Arundel for not, you know, for fighting and fighting with the RSU and not becoming um, a unified community that we should have been. We should have, tried, should have tried to do eight years ago when we first, you know, jumped in on the RSU. You know, we've been fighting it ever since. Maybe just, just I will saying. say that the RSU board meetings are like this one. And most times we sit here and there are seven, eight of us in the room, nine of us in the room. We're here and two reporters and Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> and the RSU meeting room has all those chairs. And when you see one of their meetings, there's four or five people sitting there. If you fill those chairs every meeting with people from Arundel and you listen to what they're doing and you put in your input, you will be heard because I was talking to one of the Kenny Bumport representatives who was very much um, in favor of, of, of helping us and in, in trying to be fair with everything. Uh, and still, that RSU board, they have to be as fiscally responsible, they have to balance that their fiscal responsibility with, with the kids. I actually don't think that there's any argument with that. In fact, in the meetings that I've been in to try to figure out how to go about with the petition, they were very good about talking about RSU needing to be fiscally responsible and that they would expect that. The problem came about whenever everybody thought, including you guys, yep. thought that we were going to have choice afterwards, and then that didn't happen, and the possible transportation thing, that that's when that came about. So I, I, I do understand what you're saying about the fiscal response. I mean, I, I would like to see something worked out if, if, if the RSU can't cover transportation, if this comes up to the point where it has to be presented to the Arundel taxpayers to pay for transporting for our own kids. Uh, I don't think Kenny Bump and Kenny Bump Court would say no to that because that would be that much that they wouldn't have to pay uh, because they are paying the lion's share. And, um, and, and, and again, I do feel that this is uh, maybe a couple of months premature because we need to see what's going to happen uh, down the road between the two entities. Um, I think we already know that Mr. Minad has said that they feel very much that they're correct, and the RSU's attorneys feel very much that they're correct. Well, when you have correct attorneys over here and correct attorneys over here, then the only one who's going to solve that is a judge. And they've just got to decide to get together and put it in front of a judge and get a judgment. To, because we, we were all under that same impression. Thanks to the Department of Education, not to any written contract. Don? Yeah, I've got to say, let's put this RSU. I've lived in this town more than anybody else. Right? Phil. Except for Phil. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I can tell you one thing. Shut it down, send all the kids to Kenny Bump, and use this for your municipal offices. And the other thing I got to say is a couple of meetings ago, you were talking about the Eastern Trail out there, and you were going to repair it for $63,500. Where is that going? No, we're not. Oh, you said that. That was the estimate we had. Okay, yeah, so that, that was an estimate. That was all that was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm going under that as an yeah. estimate. Yeah. And what are we doing there? Why should we repair that when a bicycle did the damage? And a guy walking on it? We're, we're working. We're no, working. We shouldn't be working so, on it. We so should just say we're not paying. It, we're working on it. It's not going to cost us anything, Don. Okay. We've got things in the work, trying to get things in the work, so it doesn't cost us anything yeah. to do that. Okay, so that should have been said enough. <laughs> it was. It, was. it, was. it, was. it might not have been that meeting, but it was. It was. It was. It was. Yeah. Okay. So you the, were the a thing that I want to. The other thing I want to make a comment on is, I pretty much go to try to go to every single RSU board of directors meetings, and 
there's three people there from Arundel, nine times out of ten, myself, Jack Reese, and his wife. And um, so, you know, you want to hear, you want your voices heard, that's where you got to go, right? You got to go, you got to stand up there, and you got to do what your folks did at the last meeting. And uh, that's the only way they're going to listen. Because, you know, I can say my piece, but, you know, the backing from the community is, is the strongest piece. So to the folks that are listening to this, to your friends, pass it on. When those meetings are there, show up. They're opposite Mondays from ours. That's right. Well, it depends on the month. Yeah. 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 One more thing. Yeah. You know, there was a meeting where you said that you were going to try to consolidate different programs with the three different towns. Has anything come up of that? Yes. Our, our, the uh, recreation directors from all three communities are working together to put a plan together to, uh, to make that happen. Nice. Is there any other, you know, uh, Getting ready to use Slegman and have. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> John. <laughs> you know what I mean? What about the fire department? Let's just the organize Don tonight. Is that <laughs> yeah. We'll give him the fire department and put Don in charge. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, nothing else? The road mean, crew, I think, does some joint work with the other communities. They right, we just had done doing some joint <coughs> work with the uh, with the town of Baron, uh, town of Kenny Butler. Reference to road maintenance. Mm -hmm. Just get that done. Yeah. So. And they There's did, a bunch of the stuff going on. And they did look at police protection. I was going to say, that's the big one. We well, can. it's a big one, all right. Um, Keith, can you expound on that figure that you well, got? Yeah, well, <laughs> we've, uh, we've approached both Kennebunk Court and Kennebunk to provide us uh, patrol services for police. Uh, Kennebunk gave us a price that, would, that it was similar to what, slightly more than what York County Sheriff's Office provides us now, which is dedicated coverage for 40 hours a week, 365 days a year. So, um, Kennebunk did the same thing. Kennebunk Port looked at it differently. They would provide us 24-7 coverage, uh, be five patrol officers. We were looking at about $350,000 to $360,000. So right now, uh, we're continuing with the uh, effort that we're making with the York County Sheriff's Office. We're going to stay with one dedicate patrol, they provide other patrol services to us. So that will be on the um, warrant. And the other piece of that, the board hasn't decided on yet. The, um, this year, we're about five to six years into our, reg our existing cruiser, and the sheriff's office would like us to replace the cruiser in this year's budget cycle. So we presented a number to that in reference to that. So, so will that go to vote? Or, or, no. Uh, as far, but as far as like the King Bond, I mean, the 24-7 thing sounds really enticing to me. <laughs> yeah, we're not, <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. we're not getting there yet. Well, not, we don't withdraw you know, from the RSU. <laughs> How many hours do we actually get? We get 40, hours, of, yeah, 40, 40 hours, hours a week of dedicated patrol service. Okay, but, but, but can he say I'm going to work Monday, Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday? He has, a, he has a schedule that's set by the sheriff's office. This week, uh, this week he's working days. Mm -hmm. Generally, he tries to work weekends and evenings and, and, and mm -hmm. shifts it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so but we don't advertise the schedule. Yeah. So <laughs> but we have a nice patrol uh, presence uh, over and above that. I, in, I've been riding through town, and unfortunately, I come across them when I'm going a little too fast. <laughs> <laughs> What's the cost of the uh, our sheriff's uh, dedicated patrol costs us ninety thousand dollars a year for the forty hours. For the forty hours, yes. I mean, Candy Bank, you said it was about the same price. There were slightly more, uh, but they had some other caveats to theirs. They, they they had concerns about covering the Route One One Eleven corridor for with their patrol services, and they wanted us to modify our contract so we would have the sheriff's office there too. So. There was a few gives and takes there, and then it just didn't work out at this point. But we'll visit again. John's ready to go home. Yeah. I just have one more thing. Yeah. Is it possible to create email addresses for the board through Town Hall? Yes. Can we do that? <laughs> I thought everybody got mine because I get all kinds of things. Yours isn't oh, listed. I know. You did that for But it's got out somehow. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, you didn't, not through me because you didn't text me back. <laughs> yeah.
I was wondering why I was getting as many emails. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm no dummy. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, we'll, we'll work to see if we can create some email addresses for you there. Yeah, that'd be a big help. Okay. You just got to check them, that's all. Yeah. Anything else? Another? Leave mine alone. Well, I'm able to take care of that. I'll second that. Second. Yeah, that was a favorite of I still have yellow. Five bucks, a donation of five dollars. I have them. Come on, Linda. Come on, Linda. Easter's coming. I think it would be better to call Tad regularly on the plan. He, he's very, I've been doing most of the work. I tell you exactly what that is. Right. There ought to be registered voters coming in. Still work to get cards, whatever, how we spell the clerk does it. Seven days. Thank you. Right. So, yeah. So I'm going to the whole list. 